welcome back to the podcast how is everybody doing welcome back to misfits room episode whatever i'm gonna stop counting because i I can't keep up but we're on a new episode a new day a new week a new everything how is everybody doing um coming at you today with no headphones because my hair is really short and i'm trying to do the video version as well because i missed last week i'm a little disappointed about that but we're gonna keep it moving but anyways i have taken out my long ext- extensions and right now i'm rocking the short hair look and i look hella weird with um headphones on so i said no i gotta i gotta at least pretend and like show off the little inches that i have so we're gonna do no headphones today because i'm feeling really insecure so if anything with the audio goes haywire, um, I'm really sorry, but the show must go on. Also, behind me, I have, and I know, I don't have my bed sheet. Let's not judge me because I'm like currently like washing them and they're in the dryer. So as soon as I'm done here, done here, can't talk. As soon as I'm done here, I'm going to go p- take them out and I'm going to make my bed. Not that anybody cares, but just so you know, I that's, that's not me. I'm not always like that. I put bed sheets on my bed. All right. (laughs) Anyways, let's get right into this episode. I'm realizing now that with the short hair, I keep putting it behind my ear and I keep hitting my earring and that's going to be so annoying. So for today's episode, I had the brightest idea to just do like a story time type of episode. And by that, I mean, I have had several instances where I could have gotten in trouble with the law or just like authority in a way and I always got off like scot what is it scot free scotch clean I don't know I got off with I'd never been arrested and I never got myself in trouble for the most part for the most part so I just wanted to share with you guys a couple of my run-ins with the law and authority and show you that (laughs) Your 20s are just the years for you just to like live it up and go buck wild and just like not get locked up. That's the whole point of making if you made it through your 20s without getting. Well, I got pulled over once, but without getting in trouble with the law, but you went buck wild, you've made it. You've made it. So I wrote down. Let me just open my handy dandy phone right quick because I wrote down a couple of instances to remind myself and not that I was a pretty wild 20 year old i'm 22 now not that i had i haven't had the craziest past few years but i i I did some things and i'm not i'm not proud of it but i'm proud that i didn't end up with problems okay so one of the first times i think that i ever came across a police officer but like me as an adult like out in the world i was probably wasn't eight i was wasn't 20 years old i was probably like 18 ish maybe i think i was around 18 yeah no i was 18 around that time or maybe before I was just about to turn 18, can't remember, moral of the story is, I was already, like, living on my own, and, like, just going out and hanging out with random people and doing stupid stuff, and I remember at one point, I was hanging out with this dude, and he wanted to smoke a little marijuana, and I I was, listen, we're not gonna judge here, I'm gonna be completely transparent, I used to smoke every freaking day of every hour, when I was just, like, living by myself, and, like, I was that shit crazy but i'm okay now i'm reformed okay <laughs> so it was at a point in time where i was like smoking and he wanted to go out and like just smoke or whatever and i wonder why i didn't smoke it no this probably must have been a, in, a, in a place where i shared with somebody and i couldn't necessarily do that in my room per se because then the person who's renting me the room would smell it and you're not supposed to be doing that so i remember having to go to we went to a baseball park for some reason i've never been there he gave me the directions and i went there and it was like pretty much like it's like a park a park pretty much closes at like what eight nine like an hour after the sun goes down everybody's kicked out of the park the park is government property you gotta go so we went there and i was like okay cool like it doesn't seem like anybody's gonna be around and I'm just gonna gas myself up a little bit. I'm just I'm just gonna give myself props and a little pat on the back. I am an avid roller. All of my friends would agree. Um, I would get called and texted by my friends to hang out, and they were like, "Hey, so like, why you're here? You know, can you just like roll this up for me?" So like, I know most of my friendship was based on my ability to roll, even with 
the claws for you audio listeners a little asmr with me and my long nails for some reason i long nails short nails no nails i was able to roll a masterpiece honestly some guys would just be like stunned and i was just like "Mm -hmm. yep that's me (laughs) so yeah we went to the park baseball park it was late at night maybe even like 8 39 or whatever and we were just chilling there so i was doing my thing you know how you do to prepare it and the way we did it was like with like you know the little cigars what are they called i think it's either like game or or what's the other one? Oh my god i can't backwards is it backwards i don't know whatever has like the little tobacco guts inside of it i took it out just listen to why i'm telling you this because it plays a part into the story so um i'm doing my thing it's prepared or whatever and as soon as i'm done literally as soon as i'm finished and i lick the envelope sealed and closed a car pulls up behind me and i'm like friends do you know these people or what's going on here i didn't call nobody weird maybe they're out here doing the same thing like we are so then i brushed it off and then half a second later the lights go on and i'm like oh no oh no my life is ending my life is over i'm caught with with paraphernalia is that what drugs are called pa- I'm, I'm i'm out here doing illegal stuff i'm gonna go away forever oh my god yada 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 so <laughs> we do what adolescents do and we go and we just kind because we didn't light it up yet so you don't have the smell of it but you still have the smell of it in the air so i went and just like stashed it somewhere no i'm lying <laughs> i split it in half for some reason and he had one i guess he i don't know if he chucked it or something i don't remember so the police officer comes over to me to my side and i'm like hey how are you how's it going or whatever and i'm like nothing just chilling or whatever and then he flashes his flashlight on the floor where i had previously thrown out all the tobacco guts that was inside the cigar that we used to make the joint <laughs> and i was like oh no he knows he knows exactly what we're doing and then he goes over to the other side and just starts talking to the other guy we didn't get out the car i think uh, if i had gotten out the car I probably would have been sobbing and crying and just apologizing for something he did not even charge me about or with yet so i'm very over i overreact so anyway i'm just there and talking whatever he asks for the guy's id for some reason i don't know he takes it and then like in the middle of them talking to each other i realized that the other half of the joint that i made was sitting in plain view and i just kind of like took a little slip of something i forgot what it was and i just like covered it like very nonchalant just like looking for chapstick and i just whoop covered it and then the, the police officer went away and then he came back he's like all right well you guys can't just you guys can't be out here it's late and the park is closed anyways you gotta go and i was like oh no problem officer i apologize i apologize i did not know what the time was but i will go ahead and head on out and i left and we were fine bruh i i know that he knows that we know that i i just know i just know that he knows what we were doing and he was a little cool about it which is great you know like it it takes certain officers like that where it's just like we know they're gonna do it anyway let's just make them do it somewhere else you know what i mean just just let's give them a little scared straight moment i think that's what that was for us and then he's like all right well you guys can't you guys don't have to go home but you can't stay here and i'm like okay well (laughs) bye bye and we left and (laughs) it was so great and then by the time we were like maybe like two minutes away of like leaving the guy was like i saw what you did there i was like did what and he's like how you just nonchalantly covered it like that was good i was like yeah i mean like what do you mean i'm like one of the guys mind you i kind of like this boy not anymore because he broke my heart but like still fun night fun night i escaped the law basically (laughs) i'm such a goody two shoes that that's my idea of escaping the law but i was honestly i was like today's the day today's the day i go to jail over what over some weed genesis really over this what are you doing with i was like questioning my life and whatever and even after that day i smoked like a chimney up until i like i moved back in to um my mom's house and like i just don't i don't know it's just weird i don't it's just weird to do it here but i don't know one day well maybe not because i'm such a lightweight now that literally if you just blow the air into my face i'm just like i'm out i'm out and i can't do it anymore so (laughs) another instance and this has to do 
with our girl Mary Jane again. I was, mind you, I was an avid smoker, okay? I used to do it waking up, going to sleep during the day, on my lunch break. Every single waking moment when I was just, like, doing it, every, every single moment. There was not a day in my life for the last, I think it was, like, maybe, like, two and a half years when I was living alone that I was, like, not smoking every single day. I was a fiend. It was bad. It was really bad. So there was this one time where um, I worked at this doctor's office. And mind you, the entire office, I'm talking the entire office, smoked. I just know it. We all, I mean, come on, we all, we all knew. And certain people you would ask, like, hey, does your guy? Like, we all did it. But some people took it too far. And by people, I mean me and other people, but me, I think one day it caught on and I, I, I could have gotten in trouble, but here's the thing. So, like I said, I normally like just, I would used to just like smoke before going into work. I, I worked at a doctor's office. I had, my patients were old people and just being at a front desk with old people who are just don't have any patients anymore, which I don't blame them, but they don't have any patients. They're so rude sometimes. They just want to go home. Maybe it's like in the middle of the day and they get hangry because they haven't had their lunch yet at their specific time when they're supposed to have lunch and all this other extra just, it was too much. So my way of dealing with people was to just get a little stimulated, if you know what I mean, and then go to work and then be fine for half the day, go home on my lunch break, do it again, <laughs> and come back and do it with the afternoon people because even the afternoon people are so much worse because they would much rather not be here either. So, one day, one morning, I'm getting ready as I usually do, and how my old apartment was set up, is it was just a pretty much a box. It was pretty much a box with four walls, it had barely one window and that window i just never opened it for some reason it was just a difficult thing to do but and then i had like one of those ac units where that was like in the wall and normally i turn it on and just like go about my day just so that the smoke and the aroma of weed wasn't on my clothes by the time that i left but i was running late and i was just trying to do everything in a rush and i just didn't really pay attention i never turned the ac on or did anything to like let the room let the room get rid of the air you know and so the smell kind of just stuck on me and i also had dreads at that time and i forget that like my dreads would just like a tr like keep any sort of smell if i don't have like a constant stream of fresh air going around like if i wash my hair or like no let's say like if i'm cooking and I don't like, you know, open the door and like let all the fumes out or whatever. My hair is going to smell like the food for like maybe like an hour up until like, you know, it just kind of wears off. So I wasn't really paying attention. So I did what I had to do. I got ready and I left. Forgot that I was stanky. But when, once you're an avid smoker and you smoke every single day, every hour of every day, you don't really notice the smell anymore. You don't. And all the perfume and whatever that you do to mask it, it does not matter. Because you know how you get a, like a, let's say a new car. And then you have that new car smell. And as, you know, it doesn't matter how many times you clean and clean and clean your car. It's never going to always have that new car smell. Learn that the hard way. Because, <laughs> okay, I'm procrastinating. I, I'm, I went to work. And normally, I would never get there that early. But I just so happened to be so early when I thought I was late and it was just me and one other doctor that was like working there and I was just like going about my business or whatever, putting my breakfast, hitting it up, whatever, making my coffee, just starting my day like normal. And I don't know what it was. It was just a weird vibe in the room. Me and this doctor would like talk all the time and goof around. He was really, he's really nice or whatever. I'm not going to dog him for saying what he like, what happens afterwards, but like we were cool and i was like hmm, maybe he's having one of those moments because he tends to get a little a little moody here and there but you know whatever as the day goes on and it's almost lunchtime a mass email mass email goes around to everybody stating we some something sort of along the lines of like don't do drugs in the office and if you're doing it in the office and we find out about it you'll be terminated and all this other stuff and yada 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 just giving us a formal warning not to partake in drugs while we're at work and i was like i didn't do it at work and 
little do you know about your entire staff your entire staff literally smokes weed so she's like i didn't know if he was talking about i don't know if my, the doctor that i was with that morning just so happened to get it with me and then said something or like there have been times where i've smelled other people and i was just like homie you smell like you smell like the ganja you gotta go spray yourself because you hello so there has been numerous of times when that has happened and maybe that doctor finally got, got like fed up and was just like listen don't be bringing that smell up in here this is this is an office this is a doctor's office this is a workplace so i guess he kind of got in his feelings and i feel like it was because of me that that email just specifically on that day it got like i guess made and forwarded because it was like pretty soon after and i was like mm, i feel like i smell like it but not really so i'm just gonna push on through and pretend like nothing's happening and i probably didn't use enough spray but i know that that mass email that everybody got was about me and then oh, the stupid manager that i had she had the nerve to go around and like I had a feeling that that person, the doctor, told this manager were like talking about it and they kind of wanted to say it was me, but they didn't want to say it was me because the way that I got this job, it was a, it was a little confusing. I might tell the story one day, but like they couldn't just get rid of me to just get rid of me unless they had like valid reasons. So she go, the manager goes to one of my um, other coworkers. There was three girls in the front and she goes to one of them and she's like, hey do you know like if anybody or whatever like i'm just i'm not gonna see no names or whatever like if you know anybody just you know like let me know because this is really important and blah 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 whatever and in my mind because the girl told me and in my mind i was just like you think that anybody in this office would snitch because the moment that that happens i'm taking everybody down everybody literally everybody would be everybody for themselves like it does not matter if somebody else were to get snitch on, they would be like, well, yeah, he does it, she does it, and he does it, and she does it. The whole office would just be a shit show, and then still nothing would happen anyway because the vast majority of that office did it. So I was just like, sorry, guys. I had to, like, you know, be like, whoopsies. I'm gonna, next time I'll try to, you know, maybe, maybe be five more minutes late <laughs> and not have that smell follow me around. But that is one time where... I thought authority would get the best of me and like come into the office and be like, hey, what are you doing? But it didn't happen because after that email, literally nothing happened. Nobody said anything. Nobody responded. Nobody did nothing. Not a dang thing happened after that. So as you can, you can tell me and authority, you know, but reeling it back to like police, because that was the only time I think with like work specifically that I was just like, oh, I might get in trouble and it might just go bad and I might get fired, but it didn't happen. But I've had other run-ins with like police where it's just like, why am I the way that I am? Why? <laughs> so I think there's two instances. The one that I'm remembering right now, it's coming back to me, is that it was one day, um, it was my birthday, had a little altercation at my birthday or whatever people were fighting or whatever and then the police came and then they were taking someone away and i was just like why are you taking people i was just first of all i was drunk it was my birthday and i was like why are you taking people away who do you think you are and yada 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 and i was in my emotions and crying and screaming and yelling and the police officer comes and he's like i can arrest you too if you want i was like no it's okay i'm fine i'm i'm <laughs> crying and making a scene and yelling and then he's like you know what i can take you with me if you want to if you don't calm down i was like no i'm i'm calm literally like sniffling and just like crying <laughs> it was a bad night but i tend to sass the police for no reason like common not even common sense just like general niceness when it comes to authority like the police that goes out the window once i'm drunk i'm just like i don't give a fuck who you are you could be the mayor you could be the president if i feel disrespected i'm gonna come at you and that's not really a good mindset so i should really learn to control my emotions when i'm drinking i even do that when i'm like at the club i get mad drunk when i get drunk i get mad not mad but like sassy i need to stop that i'm never gonna find a husband i'm 22 why am i talking about a husband anyways i get really mean when i get drunk not even mean i keep saying mean but i just get really sassy i remember one time i was at the club 
and I was just really feeling myself and when I go to the club and I'm having a good time most of the time it's because I'm just in my own world like I would go with people but at the end of the day it's me in my own world having fun and just you know just like awkwardly smiling and dancing to myself and I'm just like I'm fine and if I keep drinking like all I need is me myself and I I don't need nobody when I first get there I'm friendly I'm nice I'm with everybody but as I start to get drunker and drunker like the people that I tolerate next to me are dancing with me the list goes lower and lower and then it just turns to zero and I would just rather just like vibe at myself in a club with a whole bunch of people but I would rather just be there at the club but not talking to anybody or like having people like dance upon me So I remember this one time where this guy comes to me and he's like, hey, I think you're really cool. I was like, "Mm, thank you. (laughs) Being all drunk or whatever. He's like, you should really give me your number or something like that. And I was, or something like that. I remember and I was like, I'm too drunk. Or he was trying to talk to me. I was like, I'm too drunk to talk to you right now. Just no. And I like pushed him away. And then he comes back and he's like, hey, do you mind if I get your Snapchat or whatever? And I was like, "Mm, whatever. Just to like get him out of my face. So I gave it to him. And then I was so drunk that I forgot. And then the next day I get a snapshot and he's like, hey, it was really fun meeting you last night. And I was like, I didn't meet anybody. Who did I meet? What? I'm trying to remember. And I was like, who the heck did I meet? I went out. Had a fun time. I don't remember talking to anybody or giving anybody my Snapchat. Why would I give people my Snapchat? I barely even use Snapchat anymore. What? Are we, what? And I'm thinking and I was like, oh, hey, like, what's your name? I don't remember much from last night, but it was I, like I had so much fun that I just met a lot of people. I don't remember, you know, he's like, oh, it's me. And you said you were too you were too drunk to talk to me. So you gave me your Snapchat. And I was like, oh, oop, whoops. So I was mean. <laughs> I was like, I'm too drunk to talk to you right now. Please go somewhere. And he still wanted to talk to me. So I guess I have some sort of magical powers. But that was one night. To, to make proof or to have proof that I can be a very sassy, sassy, drunk person. One other time, I mean, I wouldn't say that I escaped the law or escaped being in trouble once, but an officer did kind of like give me tough love in a sense where um, it was a Monday and I didn't happen to go to work that day and I was in another area and I was borrowing a friend's car to like go home and do something and then come back. And I forgot that it was Monday because I'm normally, normally when I go out and it's during the day, like it's like the weekend or I'm at work and I'm like at my desk. Like I, I forget that schools exist sometimes because the time that I drive, like there's barely any like school buses out. They're not out until like maybe like eight ish or something like that or whatever. So I go out and I'm leaving the place and then I, I, the traffic is going really slow and I'm trying to like go around people to like hurry up and go home because sometimes sometimes my biggest pet peeve is like when i'm in a rush when i shouldn't be in a rush like everybody just wants to go zero miles an hour so that day i was just trying to like get around certain people and i was like why is everybody driving so slow and then this guy just kind of like zooms in front of me and i was like up rude whatever but we're still going like at the same speed limit and then all of a sudden i see one of those policemen who have like um bicycle not bicycles motorcycles cut in front of me and like signal him and i was like hmm, that's what you get for cutting me off he saw it and then the police officer turns around and he says he points at like me and like points to, for me to like go to the side and he's like yeah you too both of you pull over and i was like what what did i do he's the one who cut me off i didn't do anything i didn't do anything so um we pull over and um i think someone else goes up to him or i don't really know No, I think it's just the one person. So I guess he went up to him first, asked that guy for his driver's license registration or you know how that goes. And then he comes to me and asks me for it. And I was like, okay. And I was just like shaken up and like confused. I was like, what am I like? What? What just happened? Like he cut me off. Like I'm confused. So then he comes back to me and then he says, so like you were speeding in a school zone. And I'm like, school zone? And I'm like, oh my God, it's Monday it's monday and it makes sense why these people were going literally 20 miles an hour and i was going 30 and i was just like oh i'm sorry and he's like i've checked your record your record is pretty clean um the only thing is is that your id your address on your id that you provided me it's not the same as like your current address and you need to update your id within like what is it a month or three months after you move and you didn't do that and my address was like three addresses ago and then he was just like 
listen a speeding ticket would be like normally like was it like 300 or 500 dollars i don't remember it was like but it's really expensive and he's like normally a speeding ticket is a lot of money i'm gonna help you out because this is your first time getting pulled over i don't see anything on your on your record i'm just gonna fine you like the hundred dollars for you to for you not changing your driver's license address and we're just gonna go from there and just try to like slow down a little bit i was like okay thank you and i left that was like a blessing because had it been any other person who was like in a mood and like mad and just like trying to get through the day he would have just give me the ticket whatever and give me a second ticket for my license address not being updated on my driver's license so thank god I, I, thank god but not really because i don't know but like i ended up changing my my address i was gonna try and like fight it and be like i have up until a certain amount of time and i just moved but then again my address was like four addresses ago three addresses ago whatever i I had moved several times after that so i should have changed my license my my address on the driver's license a long time ago so i was like you know what this is a sign i'm just gonna pay the stupid fine and i should just pay attention a little more I'm just gonna leave it at that i'm not gonna fight it i'm not gonna be a dick because i know if i try to go down the spiral they're gonna be like well technically you should have changed your address like three times ago but you didn't you know what i mean so i'm just like you know what i'm just gonna pay it it's gonna be fine or we're just gonna move on you know take this as a sign from the universe to just like slow it down a little bit literally and everything so that was that was the time where i didn't necessarily escape the law but the law was working with me in a sense to like save me a couple bucks because had they had they forced me to like pay a whole bunch of money i would have been i would have been pierced and then then that officer would have had a lot of a lot of sass i would have been very sassy and then wouldn't then, then i might as i might have just gotten arrested I, i'm telling you i need to go to angry management now that i'm thinking about it the more that i think about it and like talk it out and like really sit and listen to what i'm saying i'm just like i might have anger issues i just might nah nah i'm too good for that no i'm kidding oh my gosh for speeding in a school zone can you believe that this is how you know i'm rarely like that means i'm such a good girl that i always go to work that I rarely ever go through a school zone during the week because I'm always just like the times where I go to work it just correlates in a good way where people are already in school or like the next shift of buses and kids don't come to like maybe like late 8 39 for like middle schoolers and stuff like that so <laughs> universe what whatever thank you so much <laughs> thank you so much another thing that i'm it's coming back to me now as i'm telling all these stories is the time that i guess it wasn't really a run-in with the police but the police could have came but and i could have also gotten scammed in a way but like well here okay let me just tell you the story so there was this one time where a friend i forgot how it happened but i ended up having one of my friends like credit cards or like debit card or whatever and they needed it and i was just gonna like give it back to them on like the next day but then they made up this thing like oh i have to pay this and i have to pay that i was like you're being annoying whatever i'm just gonna go take it to you because like stop just stop i was getting really annoyed and i was like if you're not gonna come here and get it like i i don't need you to call me every five seconds so you know what whatever i'll go and i come drive the 15 minutes and i'll just go drop it off to you so i'm driving and i'm waiting to make a right turn to just take the main street all the way down to the highway to then just make the left and just drive on the highway and just do whatever so i'm waiting in the right lane sitting and i don't know what it was if i i feel like i dropped my phone or something i don't know but mind you i was at a complete stop already so i'm at a complete stop and i drop something and i go to pick it up and somehow some way like i like let go a little bit of grip on the brake so the car just starts to like roll and i'm not feeling it but i end up rolling and then boom I hit the per- I hit the car in front of me mind you I'm not speeding I'm not driving I'm literally going maybe like three miles an hour whatever speed it is when you take your foot off the brake like lightly and you start moving that's the speed I was going barely even like three miles per hour so I realized what just happened and I'm like holy shit holy shit my- mind you I probably was like maybe like five feet away from the car so I might have picked up a tad bit of momentum just like not paying attention trying to reach what I was reaching 
But the thing about cars is that when metal touches metal, it makes this really loud, obnoxious noise where it just makes everything sound worse than it is. So, like, I, I, I tap his car or whatever. I kind of just, like, boom. And I'm like, oh, shit. And I put the car in park. And I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. And I get out. Mind you, like, there's a whole, like, thing of traffic next to me. There's probably, like, four lanes or whatever filled with cars just, like, out of red light waiting. And we were, like, maybe, like, the third there was one in front of him then it was him and then i was behind him so like we were all just like sitting there and i get out and like i can see everybody looking at me and i'm just like oh my god and i get out and i go to his car i'm like oh my god are you okay i mean i just left my foot off the brake or whatever like i'm sorry and then he's over there like holding onto his neck like oh my god my neck and just like making all this i was just like in my mind in my mind for a split second i was like semi-worried like dang did i really hit this person so I'm thinking that I freaking, like, hit him harder than I thought I did. I don't know. I did, Like, my foot was nowhere near the gas to, like, speed or do anything or to accelerate. I just, like, literally, like, let go of the brake for a split second. And then I, like, tapped him. And he's over here just, like, holding his neck. Like, he got, like, some sort of, like, whiplash or something. And I'm just, like... But within within the heat of the moment i just didn't say anything about it i was just like going through the motion just like being like what's going on or whatever and i'm looking and in the back in the passenger and not in the passenger but in the in the rear why can't i talk in the back of the truck like in the second seat in the back there was a kid strapped into a freaking um a booster tube what is it the, the car seat she was strapped in the car seat and i'm like oh my god i'm so sorry are you okay and then when i look at her i'm realizing she's like laughing and giggling and like playing with a cup full of ice and she's just like has doesn't know just like has carefree she's so carefree doesn't care what's happening if anything she's confused and looking at me like um can i just play with my ice in peace so I do what any normal adult would do, and I say, hey, let's just pull our cars over because we're in the way, and we can figure out the whole insurance thing, and we can call the police if you want, yada, 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 whatever. So we pull over, and I'm like, we're taking pictures of whatever, the car and whatever, and he's like, do you want to call the police? He's like, no, 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 I don't want to call the police. And I was like, are you sure? He's like, yeah, if you just give me your like insurance information and all this other stuff, and I'm just like or something like that like just he gave me like he took my phone number and something i don't remember taking or giving him a picture of my card or my insurance card i don't remember but he was just like no i don't want to call the police or anything it's fine and then i took pictures of his car mind you he had a truck with you know those trucks that have like the the, the bed and it, they have like the little ball that like attaches like little stuff like boats and stuff like the, the little circular ball that attaches things to a truck it had one of those if anything it messed up my car because the hood popped out of like a socket and like it was fine I ended up pushing it back in and the car looked like normal like nothing happened but there was absolutely no damage to his car his daughter was fine and was laughing and he was just exaggerating it and i was like all right if you don't want to call the police well i'm just going to take all my pictures because i can it's i don't know what's going to go on here but like I, I'm, I'm taking all my pictures and i'm taking pictures of your car because god forbid you go home and then you smash all your freaking windows and whatever and then act like some sort of accident happens like i'm gonna take my pictures and my evidence now and we're just gonna leave it at that i don't think he had any insurance actually i think he just gave me his number or something like that and i was like okay weird so i get home like hours later and then i get a message and i get a text from this person he's like hey you need to give me money to fix my car or whatever and i was just like um first of all i told you to call the police you didn't want to call the police and like now it sounds like you're trying to scam me because there's nothing wrong with your car in the first place when i looked at it and we took the pictures and you drove off like it was fine you didn't want to call the police there's nothing wrong with your car and i have pictures so if you want to you can like call the police and do what you want to do or call the insurance but i'm not giving you money out of my pocket just because you said so never heard from him again he never called my insurance. He never did nothing. Not that I think I gave him my insurance card, but like we never spoke with each other after that fact. And it's just like, you know what? Like I can like first of all, you were really like melodramatic when we when I got out of the car and you were like holding your neck. Like if you just had been in a terrible accident, I literally tapped you and your daughter was fine, literally laughing like nothing happened. I would I would get it if like she was crying and just like just disoriented, but like everybody was fine. And if anything, my car had damage and yours didn't. And I literally fixed my car within like two seconds, just like pushing the hood back in and it was fine.
anyone attacks me and threaten me and telling me that I have to send you money to fix your car? I said, mm -hmm, no, and I have the pictures to prove that there was nothing wrong with your car. So call me. Call me if you want or tell, tell your people to call my people. He never called my people and I never called his and I haven't seen him since. <laughs> but that, that probably would have been a day that if the police had come... I would be the one at fault, even though, like, he would claim all these injuries for no reason, but I would have been the one, not technically, Florida's a no-fault state, but technically, when you rear-end somebody, you're you're pretty much too close to them, and that's why, like, to prevent rear-ending people, you have to have a safe, safe distance, and if you're not keeping a safe distance and you hit somebody from behind, you're technically at fault because you were following too closely, so I probably would have gotten cited or would have gotten, like, put at fault. Thank God I didn't because the police didn't come and it was all right from there so that was another time where the law was on my side but not really because he didn't want to call the police but thank god he didn't because i probably would have been hella broke and um probably more than likely would have a high high insurance slash deductible thank god i didn't i was also in another accident now that i'm thinking about it but like a real accident where my boyfriend at the time when we were dating we he was um he was just like driving and i remember leaving this was like what, like three years ago or something like that he was like driving and i was like dude you're going too fast you need to slow down and he was just like not listening to me or whatever he's like i'm not driving that fast or whatever i was like dude you literally need to slow down because like, you're just you put you're just gassing it right now and like the words are slippery and like you just need to like chill out so then we ended up going down this road that we always go down and then for some reason one day this truck just kind of like stops and mind you he's going too fast we're like when he's like the car like when a car stops like he didn't have time to like recognize it and he like had it kind of just like whoa and like hit the brakes really quick what was that movement that i just did but you had to like hit the brakes really quick and then it's just like because of the water and the rain kind of just like had it it was just a off it was just a weird break to begin with so we had to like slow down really quick and he hit the brakes and then the car behind us mind you that car is keeping up with our speed because he was driving fast so technically he didn't that person didn't have a reason to think that it was just going to abruptly stop so then that car and i just i literally i saw it happening as it was happening and like with the rear view is it the rear view the side mirror the side mirror of the passenger side i was looking at it and i literally saw the car coming at us and i'm like oh my god and i braced for my i braced for my life and this red car just came flying by and like rear ended us and that car got totally smashed thank god i was in the car that i was in it was like a freaking tank not really it was like a dodge like van sort of thing so it like hit us on the back but like not much happened to our car that I, like the car that we were in which was really weird but and neither the car in the front because we kind of like tapped the car in the front but not really like much happened well we stopped before hitting that car and then the red car that hit us made us then hit the other car in the front which but it was fine and um i get literally as it's happening i'm screaming like oh my god <laughs> literally like screaming my head off and then we get hit and then i'm like oh my god oh my god and i'm shaking up because this is like my first actual yeah this was my first actual accident and this i think this happened after the one that i just told you about so i did that one didn't really feel like a real accident this was a real accident like we literally got like slammed into and i'm getting out and i'm all shaken up and <laughs> here's the thing now that i'm telling you all these stories i realize my fault i'm very sassy so this guy on the front he's like my car wasn't really messed like my truck wasn't messed up and i'm pretty much fine like i'm just gonna go and i was like you can't go that's illegal i have your license plate and i'm gonna tell the police that you're leaving the scene without the police coming here when we call the police you're fleeing the scene from you're fleeing the scene of an accident and yada 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 and all this other stuff and he was like all right fine like i was just giving him so much sass and then my ex was just like well you shouldn't have stopped so quickly and i was just like looking at him like you fucking i wanted to like yell at him so bad i was but i was trying to keep my composure because i was was also yelling at this man and i didn't want to turn around and yell at like my boyfriend at the time and make things worse so i was just like mm, it was your fault that you were going too fast but i'm just gonna i'm not gonna say anything but we'll talk about it later but just like stop talking and um finally the police come and the guy who was in the front who had no damage no injury whatever he was just like not in the mood like and like didn't care he was just like all right i'm out police let him go and then it was just me um and 
it was just me the other guy it was just me this guy and um the girl who had hit us and her car is smashed it's awful it's just like she could barely like get it to start to like move it out of the way mind you we're on a one-way street like like a one lane two-way street if that makes any sense so one goes north and the other one goes south or whatever but there's only one lane on each side so we were like blocking traffic so we had to move the car and whatever and just stand to the side and i should have i should have and i didn't because i didn't know that i could but i could have claimed me some money from that accident but i just i don't know i just never thought of it and i was pretty much fine i didn't really feel like hurt or injured or anything i was probably just a little traumatized but i didn't hit anything i just kind of like grasped the chair and like anything that i could hold on to just to like leverage myself when we were getting hit and i was pretty much fine but um yeah that could have been that could have been a bad day this is why you don't speed when it's raining or after it has rained because the wet asphalt can be very slippery and you might lose your life and i had i'm telling you i have these moments and i have these feelings like yo you need to slow down because i like you're going too fast and then i was right <laughs> i'm telling you i'm like mother and i'm not gonna say mother Teresa because mother Teresa wasn't all that good but like i'm like a god no that's a lie i have powers i have a super psychic powers so i could tell the future literally literally or maybe i just you know what? i feel like my superpower is like traffic like gauging traffic sometimes we're we're like i have a problem and i pick and choose when i want to be nice on the highway so there are times where i can just tell when a car is inching or like trying to pass me on a different lane like just inching very like speeding just to like get a little bit ahead of me i know that they're trying to like cut me off and go in front of me so i just know so i'm i'm very like aggressive while driving so i'll speed up and i'll match their speed down while knowing that there's an exit coming and they probably just want to get over an exit but i'm like too much of a i'm just too much of a bitch where i just like speed up and like nah if you're gonna change lanes you gotta go behind me pretty much i'm not i'm (laughs) And I do that quite frequently. <laughs> and I do that quite frequently. So I might no legit, like for real, like now that I've said all these stories, I think I'm ready for anger management. I think that I have some things that I need to work through that is not healthy. And I, yeah, I think it's about time that I go to therapy and an- anger management classes because wow i can't be i'm that petty even while driving yeah i am yeah i am there are times where i was just like damn if i just had an open soda i would just throw it and fling it at you right now but i never had that chance never every time somebody cuts me off or just the same thing that i would do to other people when they do that to me and i'm just like mm, if i had a bottle of open or if i had an open soda bottle right now i would fling it all over your car and you'd have a sticky car for about a week so like play with me i've never had a time where i had an open soda bottle but i did have water and i did think about it but i was just like why am i gonna waste my water when that doesn't hurt anybody you know like soda coffee when it's a success it's a success but water what am i gonna do with water so yeah so yeah basically those were like my little run-ins with the law Uh, (laughs) um as you can tell in a weird way i'm very much a goody two-shoes but i can be very mean and very sassy and just very petty that i'm surprised that i haven't gotten myself into that much trouble which is really weird but those are my stories those are my crazy stories of the things that i've been through with the law and authority and i'm only like 22 so like i have eight more years well seven and a half i think my birthday's in november is coming up but like i have like seven more years of just like a while and out that i can do and like let's just see if i can push the limits and not go to jail (laughs) or maybe even because i because i have definitely i have definitely tested the waters i think even one time i was at the beach late at night and sometimes when you're at the beach late at night and you're trying to smoke on some paraphernalia and the police show up they're like you can't be here at this time the beach closes out what it just it just takes a certain cop to be like annoyed and they just want to like troll people who are just like out having a good time and not doing anybody or not doing anything that they want to like come and harass so i guess that officer whoever it was that day who came to the beach literally drove on the sand and was like you guys need to like with the intercom and everything the, the beach is closed everybody needs to leave and i was just like 
rarely ever happens but when a cop is in a bad mood or just having to like patrol at night it happens just don't fight it my advice to you and i wouldn't really take much of my advice but my advice to you this one listen to when it's late at night cops don't have any patience they would rather be at home so like just be nice and everybody's day will go fine i i, I don't know why i'm giving out advice especially about police officers now that we're in this current climate with i'm just gonna stop talking about it no i'm not gonna get myself into trouble but anyways yeah that is it for this episode i thought i I just thought about just talking about something different because i'm tired of just doing i'm just tired of being sad every episode basically i was just i have to come up on here and like talk about something at least funny and like not so sappy every once in a while just to like balance it out because when i start to listen to it back within the next few months just like reminiscing or whatever i'm not trying to be sad every episode so i'm just like you know what i'm gonna take this time to like think of like my weirdest like funny stories and i'll like tell the podcast about it i have many other stories that i could talk about my life up until like when i moved out and like my age now like my current life now my life has been a total like it could be a movie like i'm literally thinking about either writing a book or creating a documentary of some sort or some sort of video about like my life and i'm only 22 and i've been through i've been through a lot i've been through a lot so that's something that i've been thinking about and i mean if anything i can just keep on telling you guys my story on here i've had some many funny stories many sad moments but like it's worth talking about so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this little episode of like story time and just you know just having a little bit of fun with it because I, I just didn't want to be all serious all the time because that was just don't nobody want to hear that all the time neither do i so like why so yeah so yeah again thank you i appreciate all the love and support that i've been getting on the podcast i see the numbers i see you guys listening every week i appreciate it don't forget to subscribe so then you'll be notified every single time i upload an episode i upload every wednesday but in case you forget when i upload you get a little notification from apple Podcasts. i'm also on spotify google podcast um i try to get somewhere else i forgot where i went i'll update you on that later i'm also on youtube i have a video version i keep staring at myself in this video version today i don't know why but i also have a video version on youtube i have all the links in the description and um or in the show notes in the podcast show notes i'm very bad at saying goodbye um but yeah i do hope that you guys enjoyed this video i'm sorry that my appearance is a little lackluster i will finally put the bed sheets on my bed after i'm done and i will see you guys slash talk to you guys next week bye bye